This is episode 236 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Control and Compound Financial. They teach real estate investors how to multiply their wealth using infinite banking strategies. For a complimentary wealth coaching session or to learn more, visit www.controlandcompound.com forward slash Andrew Hines. Welcome back to the show. Today, I've got Karsten Howe on for the second time. And if you don't know Karsten, you're in for a real treat. Karsten's a entrepreneur at his core and uh, a guy that was working full time and built an Airbnb arbitrage business business of 80 plus units. We ran through an example in this specific episode that uh, showed Karsten was making approximately an $8,000 profit on five of the 80 units that he has. And uh, that's just a testament to the fruits of his labor, so to speak. He doesn't make excuses. He goes out and he gets it. Uh, he built that while working full time. Now he's got a brand new infant in his life, a new baby. And uh, while being a dad, he's also, uh, also doing this. So um, pretty fascinating. And he has the time to go out and do things. It's really what I think a lot of people are striving for uh, to accomplish. So I really loved this conversation. I had a great time with it. Uh, I always like catching up with Karsten and um, I think you're going to enjoy it as well. With that said, I want to remind you that a great place to come out and meet people just like Karsten and other people who are having great success in real estate, as well as people who are, who are new to it, is the GTA West REI meetup. The next one is actually happening this week, Thursday. So if you are not already in our group, please make sure that you add yourself to it. The link is in the description of this video, or if you're watching the, or if you're listening on the audio platform, it is in the show notes, add yourself to the group, and then you will see the, the event is pinned at the top. Make sure you RSVP on that event, just so we can keep track of our numbers and let the venue know, but we'd love to see you there. Uh, come connect with like-minded people who are also driven to specific goals, people who are goals oriented. They don't make excuses. They want to improve their situations and they choose to do it through real estate. So really hope to see you there. One final Final note is this podcast grows by you sharing it. Like I said, in the last episode, there's a ton of noise out there in the podcast space. This podcast has always had a loyal following. And I think what happens a lot of the times is people just graduate. They start learning uh, strategies and then they go off and do them and uh, they might not listen as much as they used to. So if you think of somebody this might help, please share it with them. And if you're uh, on one of the platforms, make sure you leave a five star review and rating. Uh, it just really, really helps it to grow. Uh, thank you so much for that. Let's jump in to the episode with Karsten Howe. Welcome back to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I've got Karsten Howe back on the show. Been looking forward to this one. Uh, we've been chatting a little bit. You came and talked at our Investing in the U.S. Mastermind. Yep. Karsten, thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, yeah, exciting to be back for the second time. Yeah, a lot has changed. Two. Oh, it's been a while, yeah. Like yeah. you were on, I think, was it before episode 100? It was, it was earlier on. So. Yeah. Anyways, I'll have to go back and look at that. I don't even remember what we talked about because you're just like an absolute animal in the real estate investing space, <laughs> investing cross border, doing arbitrage. And I think you have some rentals as well, yep. uh, which we can dig into. But uh, do you mind just giving me some high level kind of the overall look? Because you're also full time working, but you're on paternity leave yes, right now. Exactly. So now it's like you can focus on business, being yep. a dad and all the above. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it lots has changed since we first talked and, but it, I don't, I think it's only been like a year and a half. Has it only, okay. So then it's, but, it's not um, nearly as long as I was. But yeah, I was yeah. at that time, uh, doing a lot of, uh, burrs where we, you know, buy, renovate, refinance. And at that time I was doing that for the purpose of, you know, financial freedom, getting the, uh, passive income and realized quite early on that it's not what it's drum drummed up to be what social media because there's not really the passive income there at yeah. least in ontario anymore you could do it and you can still create long-term wealth but it's not like it was exactly right? and and it was always slow moving like even the stuff i started back in 2015 it was always slow moving yep exactly so i mean when interest rates were low i mean there was cash flow and it it kind of did work right but quickly at least when I started right quickly interest rates went up and you know now it's as you said kind of like more of a wealth generator so that's when i wanted to mm -hmm. pivot and really find a, a a business where it would generate a lot of cash flow which could allow for you know the so-called financial freedom 
right? So yeah, yeah that led me down rental arbitrage and yeah, a um, lot of neat and cool stuff. We've, so when we've we done. talked last time, you you weren't even doing arbitrage at all. I don't no. think at that point. Exactly. I was. I was. I did. I. I think I just finished like my second burr <laughs> when we first chatted. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so big change of pace. One of the most notable things that I've sort of observed is. I mean, you obviously have a sales background, so you make a lot of calls because the biggest thing you're selling here is the landlords yes. when you're getting them on board to rent you product. And um, so, you know, that's a big thing. And then also a work ethic, like you were working full time building this business, which most people couldn't even do if they were building full time. Right. And yeah. I think a lot of it is because uh, over analysis or analysis paralysis, whereas I think you're just picking up the phone and calling people. And then if you get a bite, check the numbers. And then move on to step two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always tell people like you know, with the rental arbitrage business, the probably the hardest hurdle to get past is the the sales part, right? And the rejections, right? There's um, a lot of rejections, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you could be on the phone for like four or five hours and just get no's, right? Or... So five hours of straight no's, just calling people and getting straight no's? Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I always tell people, you know, if you can get past that hurdle, like, you know, if you, can, if you know, like, you're going to be on the phone for like 10 hours, you'll get a, you'll get a yes. You know, you'll, you'll get someone. There to, are the numbers there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a numbers game. Right. So. So you will eventually get yeses. Uh, so to those not familiar somehow with this concept, this is arbitrage where you go and rent out a unit from a landlord and then you post that on Airbnb for rent. Now doing it at the volume you're at, like how many units are you at right now uh, rented between Canada and the US? Uh, so we were around probably like 130. 130. Units. And yeah. how many of those would be stateside? Uh, 80. 80. Okay. Yeah. And so we're talking different cities, different setups, different people on your team, um, all while having a four month old <laughs> and, and younger and, um, and then also working. Well, yep. you're not working now, but yep. so tell me what your, your typical day looks like right now. And then I want to take a step back and get into setting up these teams. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I've been quite fortunate to be able to have a you know business partner that had um and i i partner with with aaron aaron bay so mm -hmm. being pretty fortunate where he had a lot of the kind of systems and the team in place so you know as we scaled in the us we're just really plugging into some of the systems that they've built what um, kind of systems would those be so like a, a va team that's kind of in play oh okay um, so like vas that'll feel more of the airbnb management side exactly though. But, um, I mean, managing the team too, though, like sending out requests and I think the one like thing that. I really like about this business as well is like, you can really systemize it. Oh yeah. Um, so, you know, we have like a, a full hour by hour schedule for VAs. So they know exactly what they need to do. So there's, there isn't really much managing of the VAs, right? Because all the like smart lock codes, they're there like you how have to just enter like the building shared is sheets there. and stuff that exactly. all like how right. all that information yeah so part of its organization which is a big piece exactly but then aren't vas more in that business just responding to inquiries and doing like like that kind of that kind of work no we we've trained our vas to kind of go beyond that right okay. so i think when we first hire a va kind of like that's their that's what they do, right? Do do the guest communications, respond to inquiries. But once mm -hmm. they gain some experience, we're getting them to help us like buy supplies, um, help yeah. us troubleshoot yeah. um, certain issues. Um, they're also helping us find cleaners in respective cities. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So that's an interesting one because that's like work I always feel like I would end up doing. Right. Um, yeah. So you got you basically just give them a, a procedure to go through. Are they just starting with a Google search? Who does, you know, who has a Google places cleaning profile? Yeah. So, I mean, the great thing in the U.S. is there's a lot of like different apps that, yeah. uh, where there's, you know, plenty of cleaners or handyman that are, uh, oh, for hire. apps. Yeah. Like uh, we have Thumbtack in the U.S. That's just big. Like a handyman um, app basically. Yeah. Handyman, oh, okay. interior designer, like everything. On, on thumbtack on, yeah thumbtack yeah let's see the gold nugget right there <laughs> i was gonna record it on my phone but i'm like i'll just listen back to the episode <laughs> uh, like task rabbit is another one and that's what i like about the us is like 
like versus in Canada, I feel it's like really hard to put a team fi- together. Put a team team together. Yeah. You're like scrounging off Facebook groups, Facebook marketplace or her or maybe or asking realtors like quite frankly in yeah. cape coral one of the challenges i've had is like just finding a cleaner like just things Thumb like tech. that and it's not like right high on my list it's not like i really need it but just in between because i have listed properties yeah and just between showings like just want to send a cleaner in to clean them up every once in a while thumbtack thumbtack it is that's, that's the way to go um, all right so yeah like so so we've expanded kind of how the the, the amount of tasks they have um yeah yeah and that's good and i so i have um a va that works for me and, it, and it's worked out really well and then we have one that works um on our our camp team and does a lot of the responding but we do need to take it to the next level because still there's like zach and i who will chime in and and yep. stuff like i don't have to i can always just let those inquiries pass and then somebody else will get them yeah but a lot of times i get into them so i want to get it more active because if i see somebody that hasn't been responded to it, it kind of bugs me a bit. I'm like, okay, right. I need to respond to them. Yeah. Plus oh, I want to sure. sell. Like I just want to, I like seeing that number go up. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the things that's very interesting about the, this business is, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think a lot, of, a lot of it can be systemized, but also it's, it's that um, saying about, you know, working in your business or on your business. You right. So it, yeah. I think, uh, you know, we, we've tried to keep it top of mind, like, stay out of the weeds yeah, how do and try we, and how do focus we on, on the things that like kind of provide yeah. us energy um, versus drain energy from, from our day to day. Do you have like a structure or an example of systems that you've put in that kind of help you to focus your energy on working on the business? I think it's a mental thing. It's yeah. like, you, you know, when you, when you uh, see yourself yeah. uh, re- replying to VAs about certain issues, it's like, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm in the weeds right now. Like there's so, someone else who I can yeah. delegate this to and tr- and trust. Yeah. To to either make mistakes or or just you know delegate it off versus you know for me I should be focused on, you know again like sales. Sales is probably deals, your biggest thing, right? right? Speaking with yeah. with potential landlords. Yeah. Or yeah, they would be your yeah. landlord. Or or yeah. building new standard of operations or new processes for the business, right? Like okay, that can then once it's built trickle down so so these operating procedures would be more like what you would give the vas for this is what i want you to do do you is it all pdf format stuff or do you do videos for them uh combination depending on what it is uh we recently also found a a new tool um where it basically like records your screen and like the clicks that you are doing on your screen yeah and then you can just like that's how you can assist like systemize the process right um, so so like, like AI that's AI different than open. like than Zoom screen share would be like I that's how I do them I just use a Zoom screen share video and record it. Yes, I mean th- that's one. But then um, depending on the procedure, like sometimes it's just easier. Where do you, you have something that'll show your clicks? Like, show, show your clicks, and then this is the link where you go to. Yeah. Um, username, password. This is what you do, right? I, yeah. That the name of that website escapes me right now, but um, yeah. Yeah, there's just so many tools out there these days that can make life easier. Yeah, and I find, so it's, for me, it was baby steps because delegating was always tough. Like I had my site super and uh, like on the construction site, but the internal delegation was tough. Like I, everything, I always felt like I was the best one to do it. But that's a quick way to like burn out and, yeah. and uh, you know, not feel good about things. The VA thing was a great one because VAs aren't that expensive. Yeah. And it's a great way to practice delegation. Yes. You, you can you can have them burn a little bit of time it's okay if they're not 100 percent efficient even if they're only 40 30 percent efficient to me even at that to 20 to 30 percent efficiency for my assistant i already felt a huge sigh of relief on a daily basis because i had a whole bunch of things that i now no longer did yeah and that's huge probably now she's probably only 50 percent utilized <laughs> uh, there's still lots that we can do uh, although she might like that jane are, are you watching this right now <laughs> 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 probably not actually <laughs> so anyways yeah there, that's just my thought like it, it's it's also very empowering once that works like when when it starts to work now it's like the the wheels are turning okay where else can i a- apply this where else can i create systems and for me quite frankly i like bought my life back because i was like totally burnt out 
Yeah. You sort of figured it out before you you had the first kid. Thanks to the podcast <laughs> and, and uh, you know, you know uh, connecting with, with, you know, different people in the industry that we're, you know, it's just, I think, super important to try and, again, work on things. Um, yeah, that, on the business. On, on the business that, that bring you energy, right? Mm-hmm. And for some people that bringing energy could could be those smaller things but at least it's not like draining your energy right and i also find like if it is like this little stuff where you could just do it like there's plenty that i could just do faster than i can explain it i'll still explain it because i don't want to do it twice right i'd rather explain it to the assistant even if it's an easy thing for me to do because it's just like you get into that pattern oh i'll just do it yeah that's that's how you get yourself back into the weeds yeah and then and then and then after the the day is is ended, you're like, oh yeah, I had a really busy day, but it's like, okay, did I really did I accomplish move the business forward? Right? So, if, so for you, if you're thinking I had a good day, that's a day where you made probably a lot of calls and had a few. Uh, I'd like to know more, yeah. or let's continue the conversations. So, I mean, even now, like, um, I don't even do the calls anymore. So we've also high, like, we've also scripted, you know, how we're. Uh, pitching to landlords and we have a team that it, are calling apartment buildings um, to, to pitch. Obviously, you know, I'm still there at the end to like negotiate the fine details of the deal. So but, you get yeah. the, the interested lead that says, yes, we'd consider it. Do your VAs with their script, they have a, an approximate pricing rubric uh, for what they could offer? Or you're literally no. just asking the real, the landlords at your posted rate, would you consider um, yeah, right exactly. Things. We're just like yeah. going off. We're just like literally calling all the listings that we can find, see who is open to yeah. to doing rental arbitrage. And is it just because before when I talked to you, it was it was really about the buildings, like the bigger buildings. Yeah. Is it still that, or are you looking for houses as well? We, I mean, right now in the U.S., mainly our portfolio is the apartment stuff because mm-hmm. we wanted that as kind of like the foundation we've mm-hmm. we've dabbled in a couple homes as well like at the end of the day it's homes can be a bigger profit margin yeah very lucrative right more lucrative can be more investment uh, though to furnish them yes yeah and also like the risks you can argue is a bit higher right like when you have a six bedroom home in during low season you know, it's very hard, for example, to sometimes rent those during the weekdays. Mm-hmm. So your your risk profile is a little bit higher versus, you know, yeah. a one, two bedroom apartment where you're catering to a bigger audience. Right. What are your, uh, what are your go-to cities right now? Uh, so we're, we're looking into Nashville quite a bit. I love Nashville. Yeah. I just had a failed trip to Nashville. We were supposed oh. to go and then my son got a, a fever. My friends were down oh. there. We were going to meet them. It was going to be our first time away. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't go. <laughs> Anyways, but we were there in spirit. Yeah, great city. So uh, that would be more hitting like the the tourist. Uh, yeah, exactly. Clientele. Yeah, like national numbers are really good. So we're you know finding ways to to get in. But what we're about also, uh, what about like Las Vegas? That'd be a similar vibe. But I guess maybe it's way more saturated with hotels. We haven't looked into Vegas. I I've always heard there's like some pretty strict rules. Okay, in, that in would Vegas. make sense. Yeah, I was um, curious about that. But also your competition on the hotel front. Yep. is crazy exactly yeah. yeah um but yeah i mean we're, we're trying to look for some bigger deals at, at this stage like instead of doing you know five or ten apartments at once we're trying mm-hmm. to see if there are some developers out there that will be okay with um kind of arbitraging the the entire building to us yeah like just pre-construction for rental basically yeah, exactly um which is so. something that it can make it harder for them to get financing. I yes. think that's like the big thing. Like a lot of the reason these developers want to sell out units is so that they can, you know, once they hit like 60% sold, they can get bank financing at bank rate. Yeah. Otherwise they're going with like private yeah. funds and stuff. Yeah. A lot of lenders have like a 10 or 15% kind of cap on corporate leases. Um, okay. So yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to, to find- But you're going up the deals. chain, like you're the, you're finding developers by making calls to, you know, Directly. rentals. It, you know, you're finding, getting past the property manager, talking to the developer or dealing with the property manager. So like my VAs are focusing more on kind of 
calling that the the number that's on Zillow and talking to the leasing agents and yeah. property managers. Whereas like kind of my work is it's more so the building, developers. yeah, and and speaking with the owner or. But you then know, you're looking. Can. That's more of a multi year plan if you're doing that. Yeah, because it's going to take them time to finish building. Are you tra targeting ones that are in the building process on some stuff? Like maybe they had them earmarked for rental, and you're trying to get to them early. Yeah, exactly. It's a combination. Like some some might be you know a month or two away from uh, lease up and okay. you know we, we catch them at the right time and again maybe it's not the whole building but then we can yeah. take maybe it's a 200 unit building but then we can take the full like 10 15 or 20 percent cap of corporate leases right mm -hmm. um so those type of plays we're we're, we're interested in right now in, in yeah. what who imposes that that cap on lenders them? that's the lender so the yes. lender says the most you could do the rest we want sold or for sale exactly pre-sold so and then for sale yeah we like, like we've come across uh like the the owner wants to do it but he's like you know i'm i'm the the lender won't let me yeah i'll um, still pull the funding or they won't pull, they won't yeah. continue to extend or some it. lenders won't yeah. even allow any corporate leases right so we we've had um so yeah, so it's yeah. not just corporate leases they don't want them as so it's not rentals they'll allow rentals they don't want corporate leases so yeah this so is they don't want thing. like a llc on like 20 leases ah uh, yes right okay gotcha um yeah so depending on the lender like we've we've even been asked hey our lender wants to see your kind of PL uh for really? for the last little bit um so Did yeah you guys show it <laughs> we try saying like no like that's a little we, we've never like this we, we only we're only leasing eight units we've never been asked this yeah like, like can you can you ask again but we yeah. we've we've shown it like we we keep our books tight so um mm -hmm. it is what it is right you still using the same guy yeah, yeah. are you <laughs> is that why he has no time for me <laughs> are you still using michael yeah 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 he's uh he's a little busy these days i think yeah gotta like keep pinging him <laughs> yeah yeah he's really really good um we're very organized uh, for those not in the loop on this uh we, we share a bookkeeper he's a, a guy out of the philippines really good yeah. c uh chartered accountant cpa yeah yeah and that's that's the interesting thing with you know delegating and i probably a lot of your team is overseas right yes like yeah. with the exception of physical presence that you need it's probably all overseas yeah like physical yeah. presence would just be cleaners um and you know a couple handymen yeah um, which is all thumbtack yeah oh, I like all it. contract yeah i like it talk to me about the the early wins because was your first like your first deal in the us was that like a single unit or was that a multi how did that come about um actually the first one was uh five apartments and they actually forced us to do like minimum 30 nights Okay. Um, but we wanted, I think there, there's, yeah, we, we wanted to get into the market quite badly. Right. We, um, so, so, you know, we, we moved forward with, with, um, that type of deal. It wasn't the most lucrative, like not a home run by, by any means, but it got us into the market. Um, you know, it, it got us, uh, we can get our processes set up in terms of like, how do we deal with ship stuff? Um, how do we, you know, hire cleaners and, and you know, got yeah. us got us into into the business in the U.S. So so it wasn't was perfect. Deal. It wasn't perfect. It got you in there. Yeah. Do you still have that one? Yep. Okay. And again, we've expanded that relationship, right? So so now they're okay with less than yeah. Less so than, yeah. so now we've like leased yeah. up another like nine nine units within the same building yeah. that allows for that where they're allowing for short term rental. Um, so yeah, it's it's a lot about relationships with yeah. with um, owners and property managers. Which city was that one in? Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. I hear good things about Ohio from a landlord standpoint. I've yeah. been a landlord in Ohio. It's <laughs> a directly. land. Yeah, it's a landlord friendly. Landlord, very landlord friendly. Yeah. Friendly. Uh, and then price point in Ohio, pretty much across the board, is is much more favorable than many other states. Yeah. Uh, okay, so in Cincinnati. Uh, what was your approximate uh lease there uh in terms of length or? yeah like well i want to get into some of the lease structure would you have been yeah so you'd be signing a year lease yeah we signed we signed a, a year lease um you know agreed to for these five apartments that there'll be minimum 30 nights 
um, at okay. a time. <clears throat> Did you have any any uh, like exit in there? Like if for some reason you didn't, it wasn't working out, or you were you were on the hook for the year. Uh. You know, we, we were on the hook for the year. You did but, have an LLC as a shield though, right? The LLC is yeah. the one signing, so. I mean, in, in my mind, uh, so, uh, worst case scenario, if it really didn't work out, like I'm, I'm always feel like we can talk to the property You can negotiate manager. your way yeah, out, right? Exactly. Say, hey, let's make it amicable. It's yeah. not working for us. Can we help you find a tenant? Something yeah, like that. Exactly. So, yeah. you know, uh, we weren't too like worried about about that like we were actually you know very excited like mm -hmm. we had no no credit no mm. <laughs> no company history just just um you know being able to to get a couple units so we you know we were quite excited when when that happened but yeah, yeah lease structure in a in a landlord friendly state actually the, the longer we can go probably the better so mm -hmm. you know with some of the new leases we've done with this particular um company we we do like two-year leases so mm -hmm. then we're locking in like the 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 rental rate yeah and what kind of rental rate would you be like give me an idea Are these like two bedroom apartments yeah. is that that's what your go-to is like mix of one and two one and two and what's your rent one to the other in Cincinnati? Uh, it ranges between like 1500 bucks all the way to like 2000 low 2000 2000 yeah. and so this would be very modern stuff new or is this older building? This building is actually a bit bit older, but it has good amenities. It has kind of like that old charm to so it. So old charm. Did it have like when you say amenities? What it's got a workout room or? Yeah, it's got a nice pool, um, Ooh, okay, okay. like a sky deck they call it, uh, okay. where people can can um, you know relax with with friends and family. Um, yeah, gym. It mm. it has a restaurant actually on the ground floor as well. Um, okay. And it's right in the heart of Cincinnati. And so, so it's part of a condo? Uh, it's an apartment building. Oh, it's just an apartment building. Yeah, it's like a 300 unit apartment okay. building. Okay, all yeah. right. So so you're just dealing with the property management. So a single owner across the whole apartment. Yeah, so this particular one, yeah. it's, um, it's called City Club. So okay. they have several city clubs in multiple cities. Oh, that's wonderful. So yeah. then you can just expand right into the other cities that you want to be in. Yeah. Or more in Cincinnati. Or more in Cincinnati. Yeah. So like yeah. right now they have a brand new building going up in, yeah. in Cincinnati. Um, so yeah, yeah, we're looking to, you know, for example, yeah, take down you, more units. Can you get uh, on, on for that one? Okay. Yeah. So what's it look like from for that one? Like what are you guys doing in a month uh revenue wise on one unit would you think on one unit during like peak season um it's probably like f between four thousand to four thousand five hundred per okay per unit so peak season is how long uh s similar to like on ontario like the summer months so oh so it's touristy in cincinnati like people I would have thought you would have had more corporate leases. It's just like the or, warm... Or not corporate leases, but like travel nurses, things like that. We do get those, but yeah. it's just like the the fact that it's warm yeah. in Cincinnati in the summer. Yeah. So, you know, that's where like so, like the peak season would, would Okay, be. so then yeah. the rest, the other three. So like, would that be like four months of like yeah, 42, 50 months. on yeah. average a yeah. month? And then the rest of the year is looking like what? The rest of the year, like 3,500. 3,000 to 3,500. So we'll call yeah. that 3,250 yeah. for eight months. Yeah. So let's just see what does that look like. That's $43,000 a year on the one unit. And mm -hmm. then you got five of those. Yeah. So equals this times five. So your rent on, so you're, you're bringing in about 215 across the year on those. What are you paying in rent on? So you said, like seventeen fifty on average. Yeah, I'd say that's so a good kind of cost basis. Times twelve. So your cost is twenty one thousand. Wait, did I do that wrong? Oh wait, that's for one. Yeah. All right. So then times five. So one hundred and five thousand cost on two fifteen revenue, but then you're going to have some expenses, right? Like yep. utilities, internet. Yeah. Um, that's really it, right? Utilities, utilities and, and internet consumables. So what what are your uh, what's your internet cost uh, on an average unit? Like, can you share between the five, or you have to get five services? No, we actually share uh, some services. So it's probably like thirty bucks a month across like the across, whole thing. Yeah, probably yeah. the whole thing. No, no, no. Like a per, per. unit. Oh, per. Yeah, okay, yeah, so per unit because we share thirty some. times five yeah. times twelve. 
That's nice. So eighteen hundred a year on that. Yeah. Um, then you're gonna have some consumables, um, cleaning products, and things like that. Like, yeah. What are you into for all that stuff? Like a thousand a year, you think, or let's call it. I mean, there's also sometimes some minor repairs and stuff, but yeah, let's call it like a thousand. Yeah, a thousand a year. Yeah, and then the minor maintenance you have to do is probably. Uh, it's minimal because yeah. the great thing about apartment buildings as well is that they have a maintenance team so yeah. you can submit maintenance requests oh okay so it's only if you guys like somebody caused something exactly um yeah so uh nothing well you have some insurance that you you pay for yeah, that allows you to do. do this like a commercial liability yeah. insurance yeah uh so that's going to be is that is that prorated based on the number of units you're doing or we actually have a umbrella policy in cincinnati Okay. Um, so it's like twenty five hundred dollars a year for the whole thing. For everything. the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it, and you have probably many other properties for that too, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's probably we'll attribute five hundred dollars of that cost to this. Yeah. Uh, maintenance. Would you spend two grand in a year across all those units, just fixing up the odds and ends? Yeah, I think that's fair. Okay. Yeah. So I've got that here. Uh, utilities. What are you spending on those five? I think like. $80, $80 a month. Like for electric on yeah. each one. All right. Times five times 12. Okay. So that's 4,800 a year for utilities. Makes sense. Okay. And then you're not paying any management, but you have some VAs and stuff. Um, True. Yeah. Would you, would you attribute like a couple grand in a year to the, I mean, that's slotted across now 80 units, right? So as you yeah, scale, so, so um, would it make sense to attribute two grand for a year towards Towards those units or not even? Well, five units. Yeah, I think that's. Yeah. And then probably even less. Probably but, even less. Okay, yeah. we'll call it. So. But you have, we do have like subscriptions, like noise sensors and all that. So, okay, <clears throat> you so know, if you put, put that in. Yeah. Miscellaneous subscriptions and such, like another thousand bucks for that stuff. But I'm saying like, if we put it within that oh, two grand, that, like okay. I think. I think okay, that's, yeah, all right. That, that could cover it. All right, so let's see here. I've got. There's a, so you're looking at, I mean, I guess you had to borrow or put money in to buy the furniture, right? Yeah. What are you, what are you into for, uh, furniture and these we furnish at like $6,000, uh, like including assembly and everything. Wow. That's wild. Times five. Okay, so that's well, we like a thirty thousand dollar investment. Yeah, we also got a month of free rent, so um, that yep. that helped a lot too. Month of free yeah. rent helps big time. Yeah. Okay, so going through the numbers at the top, so we have two fifteen coming in the top uh, at revenue. Uh, expenses are totaling about twelve thousand nine hundred for the year, and uh, oh, the only other thing I gotta add in there is the rent, which is at the uh, we said about seventeen fifty mm -hmm. times. Five times twelve. So, your cash flow on a monthly basis on that five unit package looks like it's about eight thousand, just over. That sounds sound about right. right. Yeah, on that's average. just one little piece of what you're doing. Yeah. And how many calls did it take to to pull this one in? Well, yeah the the first the first deal. And I'll probably talk to like. 15 to 20 different like rental ads yeah you just kept calling them you're going yeah. through zillow or did you use other software yeah going through zillow so just what criteria are you putting like new construction or no or not just even anything. just anything for rent like <laughs> any apartment that yeah. is is listed for rent yeah yeah that's not really that many conversations in the grand scheme but i think a lot more people have flooded in even since you started doing this this has become very popular i think even like before we started in the u.s to be honest popular. like i think it's a pretty popular or well-known business model like in the u.s people just they knew corporate housing the yeah other thing corporate yeah. housing it's just like uh you know by the time we we were in like every yeah. time it's like hey corporate housing people were yeah. people kind of knew what we were trying yeah to do, they knew what you were saying you know yeah um so it's a pretty yeah it's mm -hmm. a pretty i think well-known again business model in the u.s yeah you just gotta love that about the U.S., man. They're just like they're, the they're kind so of big. they're they're proving of 
of entrepreneurs and, and they're willing to entertain it. They're like, yeah. oh, you got a proposition for me? Let's hear it. Yeah. But again, the market's so big, right? So, yeah. you know, you can it can it can stomach a ton of these players yeah. in the market. Um, and then it's... But different, there is an ebb and flow, right? Like, because everybody was flocking to Phoenix. Like, Phoenix was the go-to for Airbnb. It was like the, the metrics with that market were great. And I feel like more recently... Uh, it's been heard a little bit. I, I've heard rumblings of that. And I know you're in Phoenix, so I'd like to get your take on that. Because that's just one example. Yeah, I, I think uh, we went against the grain a little bit when we went to Phoenix in that, it, at least my impression of Phoenix is like when someone puts up an Airbnb, it's a you know three, four bedroom home, um, modern, has a pool, right? Mm -hmm. uh, attracting that vacation traveler. But like for for the deal we did in Phoenix, it, it was basically like a B class. Yeah. B class multifamily, uh, 17 yeah. unit building where, yeah. uh, the it was owner, more units than that, right? Like, but 17 for you or was no, it, it's a yeah, 17, it's 17 total, total. And then you guys took on 10 of them yeah. to start. And then we you got the last 10. 17 or and last then, seven. No, we, we, and then we, we got another like two or three more. So there's okay. still, you know, some tenants okay. in there that are just regular long-term tenants. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the owner just finished like renovating all the units, perfect timing. Um, and yeah, we, so, you know, how we went about Phoenix is more so yeah. like no frills We're we're offering nicely designed, clean units to people who are traveling to Phoenix. one and two beds as well. Yeah. One mm -hmm. and two beds. Okay. There's even a couple studios mixed in there. Um, okay. but then, you know, our, again, the, the risk of this deal would be lower than doing say five like single family homes in phoenix because oh, your your audience is just so much bigger well, and you're investing way more to furnish a house versus furnish yeah uh who was i talking to oh was, i was talking to matt pichet about this like he'll spend like 40 or fifty thousand dollars furnishing a house for airbnb yeah. that's a lot that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot like i hear people talking about six grand but i mean his stuff's nice don't get me wrong yeah. it's just it that adds a risk profile to what you're doing if you can get in for less but sometimes like if you've got to do it to stand out you do it that's true so how yeah. did you guys perform there I, I i've heard you talk about the numbers on this this phoenix one before yeah i mean that that was a home run kind of deal i, I think we like made our investment back in like four months yeah, well, the numbers I just got there, you were like 600% return on the uh, the Cincinnati yeah. one. So you were home run there as well, I yeah. guess. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and and we didn't even know, but we we launched right in time, like just before the Super Bowl. Oh, so okay. we, we were able to uh, get some wins off, off that yeah. as well. That's um, awesome. I love so yeah. I love hearing those like little successes. Yeah. That surprise, oh, we did way better than we thought we would here. Yeah, but... Um, um, you know, but but after putting up so many units in the U.S., we've also learned kind of like a, a a trick or strategy is to make sure we're launching units like as the market is going into peak season. Like you don't really want to be setting up and launching like in the in low in, season. In low season right? that, does that get some algorithmic adjustments from Airbnb? If no, it's more so you know if it's if it's the right deal like you're going launching at a time where you can make a lot of money so you can make but your money he, back quicker here's my contrast with that yeah. it's is how long does it take you to to get up and running like with our camp we have there's only one time to make money and that's the summer right so it's it's like everything like i, I we debate this you know is it better to be closing right at that time so you're not bleeding for a few months for me i want the run-up i feel like i need we need like four months of run-up at least yeah. Yeah, for 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 us, I mean, we can. I think at at this point, because we just know how to like put teams yeah. together. Like yeah. we can put put up five units in probably two weeks. Okay, and this would be like you would have your VAs helping find and coordinate with people on Thumbtack or so. Other I do platforms. a lot of that. You do like a lot of that. Terms finding of, the people to do in terms work. of finding people to actually, you know, do work put, for you. Do, do work. Yeah. Uh, I still do that piece. Um, I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're sometimes talking about. Well, you want to build about, a team, right? Like yours, that's you setting up the system, building yeah, a team. Uh, yeah, because at the end of the day, we're, we're still talking about uh, us working remotely and trusting someone with 
eighty thousand dollars of furniture or whatever it is, right? If we're yeah. setting up ten units, so, so I'm still doing a lot of that initial team. You don't want them to just load up their truck and take it all. Yeah, away. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> is Very there possible. Any, is there any accountability on an app like Thumbtack like to stop? That's what I, I love about an app like that, right? Because you can there's see their reviews, track record, yeah. right? So, I mean, if someone has five point or four point nine rating with 30 40 reviews the likelihood of you getting scammed is a lot lower right yeah than finding someone off yeah. gg or facebook or whatnot right yeah yeah that's 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 a huge gold nugget right there yeah talk to me about um that process and where you're finding the furniture like where do you find that you can get stuff that you know you don't want to bet people are going to complain about we have some some angles that we use i think we zach orders from this company there's a couple of mattress companies that get us good reviews and they're like 400 bucks a mattress or something nd i think is one of them yeah honestly we do a lot of amazon and a lot of ikea amazon and ikea yeah. purchases yeah like your mattresses too yeah really <laughs> yeah oh wow okay we have, i mean we we really don't get complaints on like the and bed you, is not comfortable or anything so you're like. just getting like a no box spring <clears throat> getting a, an ikea bed frame and throwing it right on or do you yeah. get the box spring as well uh no we just throw it right on yeah yeah so it's a little lower than a bed people might have elsewhere but maybe yeah yeah that's but, okay though if you, if they roll yeah. out of bed it doesn't hurt as much <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we buy a lot of stuff on like amazon and like yeah so just keeping it simple um so you're you're buying the typical stuff like you're gonna buy you know coffee makers and all your cutlery and all that stuff is that ikea purchases or amazon or a mix a mix okay whatever yeah. you can't find from because you're not going to ikea you're buying it all online exactly so yeah. you know there there's a yeah. and our interior designer you know um whoever we we hire will, will help with all this but there's obviously a fine balance between how long it takes to to get the get stuff. it get to get the stuff and then yeah. the the quality and, and whatnot yeah. so and where do you get it so, delivered to just the actual units they're being set up in so we're actually uh rent a storage unit i was gonna ask is yeah you could probably have them boxes just fly in exactly yeah so yeah. who receives them so we we find storage facilities that facilities that are yeah willing to receive deliveries Ooh, so is that kind of more like industrial storage or is not that... no like these are like self storage so some of the bigger players in the u.s i think ones like um q smart q smart okay. uh they they ha they manage i think self storage yeah. facilities like niche across the u.s yeah so bigger shops like that will take deliveries and i'm guessing that you probably have your like you have a standardized list of every unit needs the following things and you have your vas ordering that stuff interior designer oh will, the interior designer will order who's also a va or no <laughs> <laughs> is that th that one's local uh that one yeah we we hire like local well like so that's part of like uh interviewing and setting up the team okay is that somebody you have like full-time just working for you no no so still every, a contractor yeah okay. yeah that's all right though yeah we have used an interior designer I, I found that it is um, quite expensive on the uh the setups yeah but uh i like the way they, they would just map out everything for us like you need to buy all these things uh, and then, you know, that's a list I just give to the assistant, you know, to do it again. Back then I was still doing some stuff myself, which <laughs> anytime I find myself doing that stuff, I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, yeah. as soon as I get that frustration of clicking buttons, I'm like, no, not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interior design. I mean, it, it's, uh, especially with so many players now and doing Airbnb, like I think interior design is definitely to. something you shouldn't unless you're qualified to do it you probably shouldn't, shouldn't do try it. doing it yourself so the interior designer are they taking photos of the units and virtually staging them and then saying buy this stuff is that how that's going or yeah they create uh so if if it's well someone local they're they're gonna you know go to the apartments oh is it is it measure. usually local yeah so sometimes okay. we use local but sometimes yeah. if if it's a remote um yeah. designer like if they're designing from remote yeah. then uh we get a, someone boots on the ground to go take measurements of of the units take yeah. videos of the unit and then we'll share it with the designer and then they is this still thumbtack or like to find um this? yeah or task rabbit you task know just rabbit. pay just pay someone like 40 dollars an hour to to, to go take some videos no to oh, go to take do some videos yeah yeah but what about the actual designer themselves that's probably not as easy to find thumbtack they still are on instagram there? I think a lot of times because people probably realize there's a need. There's a lot of people running Airbnbs that need help with that. Yeah. Right. Oh, I yeah. love it. This Instant. is what I love the US for. <laughs> yeah. 
because the, the mentality is like hmm do people need something i'm gonna provide it yeah yeah <laughs> different sure. here very different here very like people different. don't have that entrepreneurial mentality in canada well i don't find not as much there are some of course but yeah. not nearly to the, the degree that the u.s has i agree so a lot of this is just like put your head down put your list together and crush through it like there's lots of steps and lots of systems that need to be created I mean, what's your average day now? I know it seems like you're kind of engineering your way out of the business that you don't have to run it. Yeah. You can work on it, but don't have to work in it. Yeah. Is Are your days, are your, your hour commitments decreasing at this point? Or are you just replacing the effort you were making on running the business with, you know, seeking out developers and bigger contracts? Yeah. I mean, I think that's my, that's our kind of sole focus right now is, you know, building more relationships with with developers and also potentially looking at other countries for mm -hmm. uh, for good markets as an example like we're exploring like dubai um as um as a pretty lucrative market what do you think about going to i had i had some um girls from vancouver who are uh investing in cabo and tulum i saw that yeah so well i i i saw the clips yeah, yeah. um cabo we actually have looked at before yeah um but it's it's not you see sometimes there's the language barrier yeah like, of uh, course yeah um and also it's different i like uh, it's not like for us we're not trying to go buy property and then putting on airbnb we're trying to convince someone to rent it to us to mm. do short-term rentals so i think that is a big difference yeah because cavo is like it actually works out well for to just build them own them because like well i mean it's from the numbers i heard 15 yeah. percent cap rate you know right. you can exactly. do you can do a lot of good business at a 15 yeah. percent cap yeah so yeah. um you know it's just a different business model so mm. sometimes just like how how excited are we to you know really want to get in the market yeah. and start it's understanding if you can, if the you nuances speak english to yeah. them um yes definitely right. dubai like what are some of the the hurdles you think you would face there like how far are you in that process uh it's it's ongoing but like you know it's just like structuring the business so like legal structure legal structures you know um that that type of thing and and it's like i mean i've never been to dubai so it's like um just knowing which pockets are are good not good why do it there like what what drew you to to make that conclusion that you would like to expand there the numbers are awesome so like you've looked at rents like what would you pay for rent on a one or two bedroom um it so I, I don't i don't quite remember like the the rent but it's more so it's it's just the the daily rate that you can get in dubai okay so, so say you might pay three grand or something would that be in the ballpark exactly three, you're, three grand on but a you're bed. being able to make like six seven eight on six, a month seven, eight. right so just a bigger spread on a month bigger rate. spread so it's right? the spread yeah and um how much of this like we haven't even really talked about aaron aaron's been on the show before yeah um long time ago need to get him back is he still in korea no he's back for the summer he's back for the summer so you better catch him before you better he... catch him <laughs> briefly catch him yeah okay yeah because he's been posting about his lamborghini i guess i should have cued clued in that he was back yeah <laughs> um anyway so aaron uh is a big part of the business that you do but i'm not sure what he handles versus what you handle he's he's like the visionary right? he's the visionary and yeah he, 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 he kind of gives you the idea and then you run with it yeah i think so yeah. Yeah, so it's been working well. I mean, he he he's kind of seeing okay, what what market should we go to? How should yeah. we pivot the business if we need to? Right? Yeah, so. and talk to me about that. Like, obviously, there's lots of um, talk right now. A lot of people talking about how Airbnb is contracted uh, in the U.S. Um, you know, with the recession fears and also things just getting way more expensive. Um, what do you see happening? How are you guys adjusting? You know, predictions for the future. Uh, I think we're, we're just more careful now in in what deals we do, right? Like when we first started, we wanted to grow a portfolio. So we're like, hey, we're going to, like we're doing deals, mm -hmm. right? We, we, we want to scale a portfolio. So yeah. uh, like we only started this in October. So, you know, we've ran really hard the past couple months. So you, so you started arbitraging at all or arbitraging in the U.S.? In the U.S., like okay, since October. So you're not, even, you're not even a full year. Yeah, exactly, right? That's actually insane. Yeah, <laughs> so we, we've ran really hard. Uh, but so, you're seeing cash flow right off the bat, right? Yeah. Like you, you've you already paid back on multiple of your, your uh, properties. 
um that's crazy yeah like we've 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 done a deal or two that haven't been as lucrative was it was right? okay so not a dog but not as lucrative yeah exactly right yeah. um but that's the thing where we were like okay now we know like we don't really want to launch something like when in the when it's like come yeah. like after the after the, the peak, peak season, season and coming down down so what will right? you fill that time with then rather than growing or you'll just focus on another season where they don't have that or just, another city i think just uh collect collecting some cash collecting some cash <laughs> right? and then feels re -gearing. Good. yeah, yeah re-gearing um and and gives us time now to kind of look for those bigger opportunities right which yeah. could be ones in dubai where you know likely we're not looking to do again like renting just five or ten apartments like we we want yeah. to potentially like look for someone who's willing to give us a whole building in dubai like yeah versus you know doing like 10 at a time and, and scaling there but you would have a different experience dealing there um just like i mean thumbtack probably isn't a thing over there there's a different culture so those are all the challenges yeah right? like you have you have to uh, create new systems entirely like yeah. you can't repeat your systems yeah. i mean to a degree you to can to a degree but yeah but there's a lot of new there as well yeah. you're totally correct yeah. yeah like there there's probably no thumbtack it's probably mm -hmm. maybe a lot more difficult to find people well, and there, right? like what's the cultural acceptance of it like is this already a thing there or would you guys be the trailblazer we know it's a thing because yeah. we we see it on airbnb like there's a lot of listings um but can you tell they're not owners you can't but you can you can also tell that yeah. you know a lot of them are arbitraging uh, Arbitra because they, know, have they have multiple they have multiple units that kind of like look the same or oh okay small things like that like um, in different buildings you can yeah. kind of you're tracking them and you're just yeah. assuming this must be an arbitrage scenario yeah exactly couldn't just be a common owner owning condos could be could be that um i i still think yeah. i mean it sounds great like their numbers numbers sound good i think it's worth it's worth the, the experiment yeah. to figure it out and you could probably hedge your risk like obviously a big reason so many people flock to arbitrage is you can you can minimize the risk yeah like your payback is within a year if you're doing it well if you're doing it well yeah, yeah. but uh to i mean to to go back to your question about contracting like i think you just need to do it do it right and find gaps in the market right like so do it right meaning like design you're doing it properly like you're, like you're not, doing it professionally you're yeah. better than the competition yeah. photos like, you're better than yeah. the competition like photos need to be good like it's it's a marketing play yeah a, you a have to be it, better right? you, you cannot be just better. be okay yeah but that that's what happened during kind of like the covid times right is, is when mediocre people just, was working just thought like oh yeah i can just throw something up on yeah. airbnb and make money right yeah. Um, yeah, so, a lot yeah. of people who aren't really ready to be entrepreneurs, like they're, they, they thought they could do it. They were a little bit scrappy, but they weren't ready to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, you know, good pricing strategies and is yeah. another do big thing. you guys thing. use like Price Labs or? Uh, we use Wheelhouse. Okay. So I think I talked to Aaron a while back and he's like, yeah, I never use any optimization. I do my own pricing. We, we've started, we yeah. started using it, um, yeah. on, in specific markets. Yeah. Um, just because, uh, these pricing softwares uh, help with help us understand the ebbs and flows of market yeah like uh for example like a certain long weekend that we don't know about yeah maybe there's a big spike in the daily rate but it'll help you know so that. it'll help us yeah. know that and you can put price floors on that you exactly won't, you won't go below exactly yeah. so um yeah. so yeah i think like just doing it right yeah. and uh finding gaps in the market meaning uh, like for example, we're we're in Pittsburgh, right? And we we saw like okay, there's like a slew of like one and two bed apartments uh, in the city because it's probably the lowest entry yeah. barrier to entry, um, you know, low rents and whatnot. Yeah. But we found that like um, the supply of five bedrooms yeah. and up homes it was almost non-existent. There so, were like six in the entire Pittsburgh. So what do you um what do you typically look for if you're if you're trying to pick a city or pick a pick a gap like are you you're going to a city and are you looking for so many units uh on airbnb or well the what i was explaining this so when we looked on air dna we were like oh okay like there's not that many like five or six bedroom homes okay so you right? just saw there was a lack of that yeah so, then so we in went any on city you just you just look at a ratio is there a ratio from one bedrooms like if if i see a thousand one bedrooms available i should see 
you know, 300, five bedrooms or four bedrooms. Definitely like obviously yeah. the bigger the home, the the, the lower the, the, number the numbers will yeah. be. Um, I, I don't have an exact ratio, but mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh, we specifically saw like f five bedrooms. Again, there was like less than 20. Mm -hmm. And when we looked at the calendars of these listings, they were just all jammed. their all their weekends were booked up. Yeah, we're like, okay, like no no brainer. Like there there is uh, there yeah. is uh, a demand. And you saw their their pricing for the weekends was uh, was a number that you could stomach. Was ridiculous. Yeah, like ridiculously low. We're like, okay, these these people are leaving money on the table. Oh, because there's so few of them. Because they there's so few of them, more. and their weekends are all booked for the yeah. next. Like, and they're three, not four using months. optimization. These are probably Joe, you know, Joe homeowner. Yeah. you know, just. So, um, yeah, like we, we, we got a six bedroom home, $4,500 in rent yeah. and we're our first booking. We got like someone booking like a $10,000 uh, a month per, per month. They did a month. Like they just they did the whole month. three months. So the, oh, it, it was like a $40,000 booking, <laughs> our, our very first booking. I so these know. are the gaps that we try and find same yeah. same same idea with phoenix like we we thought the gap was that like there no wasn't frills. a lot of the one and two they had tons of the bigger homes because <clears throat> yeah. that's what everyone does in there and there yeah yeah and like the so no you're frills kind of going against of, the grain yeah. in these different towns yeah. don't do what everyone else is doing yeah, kind like of do no it had no pool no gym yeah. no frills so like just cheap just cheap and there was really few of those like there was a lot of the bigger the bigger houses but not a lot of the yeah the small ones and exactly. what did you see that made you think that the one and twos would be a hit just that there was less of them or did you I look at this, the numbers yeah it's more aaron's experience it's more when aaron it, when it just knew it'll work <laughs> yeah, yeah you know uh yeah. so you yeah. have like if you're looking at a new city do you have an instant tell like you start your initial research you're like this is worth looking into further or you look at a city and you're like now there's something not right or how do you know if there's too many uh airbnb listings yeah uh Air DNA helps us with this yeah. with these high level metrics. So yeah. we're looking at you know average daily rate, what we can charge on average yeah. for a night. We're looking at occupancy over yeah. the course of a of year, yeah. and then we're looking at like how many listings there are yeah. in a in a market. Mm -hmm. So for example, like in in Phoenix, I, th I think there's like seven thousand plus short term rental listings, right? Yeah. But then the ADR is still sitting, I think, around two hundred dollars a night. And I think occupancy on air DNA is around like 60%. Mm -hmm. So like those metrics tell us like, oh, there's might still be some yeah. uh, room for some yeah. more listings. And you can just multiply out some yeah. numbers and figure out roughly where, you, where exactly. the average person would be. Yeah. So if you can get a rent that's under that average, then you can be profitable. Exactly. Because the average on air DNA is just an average of everything that's in the yeah, market, yeah. shared rooms, private mm. rooms. So, so I mean, you know there's room to we know we're going to outperform yeah. those yeah. like averages. Do you, right? do you want like at least 500,000 people in a city to look at it or you don't really care? Will you go to a, a city that has 200,000 people? I think we don't really care in um, if the metrics fit. Yeah. And then also if we, we see that like there's major hotel chains. Yeah in the city in the market there's like hospitals in the market like there's yeah. things uh there's reasons for people to go visit would you look at cleveland uh we've looked at cleveland and the numbers are not good not good <laughs> we were I, I offered hear people rave about cleveland i maybe from a multifamily investing standpoint in yeah, terms of but like, not for arbitrage uh, not for arbitrage yeah. so you're still gonna pay your like two thousand a month for a two-bedroom potentially well no you can yeah. get less than that but, you can get it less probably but it might not be a nice product yeah and and like the maybe the average daily rate is just too low so you're like yeah grinding away grinding at like away to make eighty dollars a night yeah. throughout the year trying yeah. to make it work right what are some areas that you're staying away from are you looking at florida yeah we we're, we're looking we don't have any we're, we don't have a presence in florida yeah. but, but we we look okay yeah give me some cities that you're in so pittsburgh cincinnati pittsburgh cincinnati St. Paul, Minnesota. St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, Charlotte. Charlotte, okay. Um, we're, Phoenix, obviously. Yeah, Phoenix. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that sums it up, basically, for now? That sums it up for now. What's yeah. your favorite so far? Favorite so far? I just, I I like Cincinnati. Yeah, we're, we continue to expand in Cincinnati. Yeah, I just, yeah. Cincinnati seems like a, a great middle of the road town. Yeah. Like, not extreme in any way. 
Yeah. Like, it, exactly. it, it feels like you could invest long term there. You could arbitrage there. And this is just like high level interpretation of that city. I, I don't I, I've been through it. I've never even really stopped. I don't right. think. And yeah. I mean, they they I mean, they have a NFL team. So, yeah, there you helps, go. Right? So you can yeah. help with Super Bowl. You can, you they, can get they have a they, well, they have a baseball team. Yeah. The Reds. Right? The Reds. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's stuff to do there. Yeah, and it's not far either. Not that you want to get into that, you know, pattern of I'm going to go visit my rentals. <laughs> like you, we did you end up foot. going to Phoenix? Like, have you been there? We have not stepped foot. <laughs> Which cities any... <laughs> have you been to of, of the ones you own since you since you've been involved there? In the stuff we, we so rent. So none of them, right? Of you them. haven't been to St. Paul. You haven't been. None of them. None of them. <laughs> that's the way to do it um yeah. you know i say that it's a good idea to go get a feel for a city yeah. but it seems like you guys are able to, to accomplish the same result yeah. uh, digitally virtually virtually yeah. yeah i mean there's just a lot of tools these days right yeah. like you know zoom videos or yeah like there's just a lot of ways to get things done these days yes there definitely is and it's tempting it's tempting. It's well, tempting. it wouldn't be a bad idea to go like, you know, just even for your own yeah. feel, right? You talk about Aaron's feel, like you might get that feel when you go there. Oh, there's more opportunity here, That's which true. you might not get yeah. online. Yeah. It's that intangible. To to be honest though, like Aaron did visit Cincinnati before. Okay. So, yeah. um, you know, he did have a feel. A feel yeah. for it. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, Okay, so higher level vision. Obviously, you're putting the cash flow in. Are you going to be going back to work? Is that the plan as of now? Uh, to be determined. To be determined. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, obviously, the cash flow part is going to be taken care of with this. If you keep growing it, um, what about uh, long term asset acquisition? What are you What are you eyeing up? Yeah, we. I mean, I think like long term, like we we, we want to. Uh, you know the the cash flow we get from from this business, we we do want to invest it in some longer term assets like multifamily assets. So you'll continue to grow that with Aaron. You'll just funnel the money back into it. Yeah, I think uh, you know that's the plan. Okay. Um, we haven't looked too too much into it, but yeah, I think that right now that you're makes just sinking it into growing this business. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what do you say to like naysayers or people who like make excuses and say this doesn't work anymore and all that stuff? Just got to put in the time. Uh, yeah. You're not, you're not abrasive at all. Like you never <laughs> like suck it up. <laughs> uh, I mean, you just got to put in the time. Uh, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, it's, 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 I mean, this isn't really even real estate investing per se. It's just, it's just a business. It's just a business. It's just a yeah. business model. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think every business model has its pros cons risks every business can be done well or done be done badly too right yeah, exactly. two different people you know like earlier on in investing back before i even knew of podcasts like you'd hear you know people say oh don't do that real estate investing i knew somebody they did it they had a tenant destroyed everything we'll never do it again my brother he, he rented at one property he's like i'll never do it again mm -hmm. and you hear stuff like that yeah. but that's just case in point there's a way to do things the right way and then there's a bad way to do it and get out of the business real quick. Yeah. And exactly. uh, you guys are obviously following best practices. Uh, you, like you said, you listen to podcasts, you educate yourself, you surround yourself with really smart people. Uh, Aaron's a very smart guy, yep. very successful. And that's that's probably a big piece. Big piece. And he probably loves how how you just go out and crush it out and add so many units. And Yeah. And, and yeah. maybe that's a little, little bit about like partnering up with people as well, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, there's a synergy there. There's a synergy. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've been lucky, you know, we found that synergy, but you know, I think a lot of people also just like partner to partner yeah, um, you, as well. And I don't like that. I, I yeah. like the strategic partner, yeah. like find people that complement your weaknesses. Like you have a strength, they have a strength. They're different yeah. and they work really well together. I love that kind of partnership. Yeah. I think yeah. I have that with the camp. We have a lot of different like skill sets and we kind of help each other. Yeah. Um, it's nice. Anyways, exactly. where do people find you? Uh, Instagram is probably easiest way to, to, to find me. Uh, yeah. It's just Karsten Howe. Karsten name. Howe. Okay. Yeah. We'll put that uh, in the show notes. Any words of wisdom you want to leave people with? Any words of wisdom? Um, or anything else you wanted to share? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I started my real estate investment journey like back in 2020 trying to scale a portfolio. Um, a lot of people say like, the avoid the shiny penny syndrome but you know in my case 
there was a shiny penny yeah and i entertained it and it and that worked was out really well that was this right well um, the grass is greener concept like uh, people think it's greener i i used to work in a restaurant hotel uh, hotel restaurant as a dishwasher and i saw the servers standing around making tips working half as hard as i did and everyone else used to just complain about oh they don't work hard i'm like i'm gonna go be a server <laughs> i got the job and just yeah. made more money yeah <laughs> so so you know i think there yeah. there's just a place in time for you to like you know if it's not working to pivot or explore yeah. or or change a different strategy yeah, don't be don't be afraid of acknowledging where the data tells you that yeah this isn't working what i'm doing right now the way i'm doing it doesn't work yeah but the, you leaned on probably people who were very successful yeah. and you were you were taking from their inspiration right like yeah. you saw people doing this yeah. and saw it was working yeah like my like my initial approach of financial freedom mm -hmm. building a kind of a separate income stream through long-term rentals it wasn't that it wasn't working it's just like what I envisioned, how quickly can yeah. scale? Yeah, was, yeah scale. wasn't working, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you just kind of have to pivot and be like, okay, like what's what's this I'm seeing here? It looks interesting. Um, yeah. And then if you believe in it, kind of like go take action, right? Yeah. And um, you know, get get educated, get help, um, and and try it out, see if it works. Awesome. Very yeah. well said. I uh, I like it. And you know, lots of people are going to have a lot of different things going on in their lives. And uh, like, you know, you're a new dad, you're still, you're not making any excuses. You're working full time, not making yeah. any excuses, just doing it. Yeah. I think yeah. you can always make time yeah. for things that matter. Yeah, right? exactly. So. Cool. All right, Karsten, thanks for doing this. Thanks a lot for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. There are a lot of people out there talking about the infinite banking strategy and whether or not it makes sense for them. To find out what it's all about and if it's a fit for you, visit controlandcompound.com forward slash Andrew Hines, where my audience can gain exclusive access to books, podcasts, and webinars tailor-made for real estate investors.